Hey guys, Ty Streetman here. I thought I'd give you another sample of the content of my upcoming book, Aquatic Habitats, Aquariums Inspired by Nature. Firstly, I know that many of you have already pre-ordered the book from Amazon and I'm truly grateful because that takes trust on your part and I really hope the book is worthy of your expectations and I'm working really hard to ensure that it is. Secondly, as you may be aware, the release date for the book has been pushed back a number of times and this is because the book is huge. I wrote 387,000 words, which is half the length of the King James Bible. And that fact, combined with the fact that the book will be released in a coffee table sized format, meaning it will be big and with lots of pictures, means that my dear editor Jason and the team at Skyhost Publishing have got their work cut out. We are spending a lot of time refining the text, which includes slimming down the monster word count and making sure that the book is as good as it possibly can be. Jason and I spoke recently and we've come up with a date for release that we hope is set in stone, which is February 18th, 2025. And I appreciate that's next year, which is scary to say out loud, but that's okay. This project has been in the works since March 2021 and I set up almost 100 displays, of which 62 made it into the book. There will be lots of photos, maps and information not just on the fish and the plants, but also on the habitats that the, these animals and these plants come from, as well as information on the human and natural histories of those places. There are also guidelines on setting up tanks, water chemistry, stocking levels, how to scape your display to maximum effect, and how to get the best out of your plants. Much of this information comes from written contributions of friends of mine, including George Farmer, who's my partner on this project and is the director of photography for the book. There are stories, anecdotes, helpful tips, and detailed descriptions of habitats written by friends from all over the world, such as Ivan Nicolgi in Venezuela, Juliana Leroy in Brazil, Jason Salda in Australia, Nom Wiwat in Thailand, and Roman Burkhardt as he's traveling around the US, and also my friend Joseph C in Ecuador, who's in the Amazon jungle doing amazing things. You should check out his Instagram. I'll put a link into that on here. One of the big contributors to the book is my friend Tomas Minesi, who's based in Kinshasa in the Congo in Central Africa. And you may have seen Tomas's amazing footage and photos on his Instagram account, congo.nature.photography. I'll put that in the description as well. Well, in this video, I wanted to show you a display inspired by the photos and descriptions sent to me by Tomas of a forest, streams, sort of lagoon habitat, deep in the Congolese jungle. And Tomas explored this beautiful river and he found stunning Congo tetras and one of my favorites, the oddball African butterfly fish. I really wanted to do a display for these guys. As the tetras grow large, we needed to choose a tank that was pretty big. And so I've used a 120 centimeter by 50 by 50 centimeter tank, which holds 300 liters. And that's 47 by 20 by 20 inches and 79 gallons in freedom units. I wanted the display to have a really warm ambience and a slightly mysterious vibe simulating the tannin stained waters of the habitats which Tomas had explored. I really like the idea of filling the display with lilies as well. So I've used Nymphaea lotus, which is a plant sold by Tropica. You could use other lilies. You could even use some of the dwarf pond lilies available. The lily stems provide broken lines of sight and refuge, which ensures that our tetras, both the males and the females, can get away from each other if they want to because the males can be a bit boisterous with each other and can pester the females a bit too much sometimes. So the stems create these broken lines of sight and means that fish can get out of each other's way and vision if they will need to. And meanwhile, the lily pads provide cover for our butterfly fish. African butterfly fish love to jump. They live just beneath the surface and they hunt insects and can launch out of the water to escape predators from below. They will jump at the slightest provocation. So I've used cover glasses on this display, which were generously donated by Horizon Aquatics, based here in the UK. I wanted a fish to inhabit the lower levels, so I settled on the really fun upside down catfish. These fish are nervous and shy, so I added 10 of them and made sure there was plenty of cover in the form of the tangles of wood. And the fish would come out to feed during the day once they became confident, especially as the lily pads grew and expanded and began to dapple the lighting from above. 
I've used some powerful LED lamps for this display to simulate the burning African sun, although the lilies will grow in medium lighting. For me, what really transforms this display into something special is the light screen and gradient foil I fitted on the back. So this light screen was kindly donated by The Light Ground for the book, and I combined it with this orange to yellow gradient foil that goes on the back of the tank. And this not only creates a black water effect, but it also beautifully illuminates the scene and the fish and causes that contrast and that's the pop of it. It looks really, really good. So yeah, I think it was fundamental to making the display as good as it is. Obviously, I have used quite expensive and high-end kit for this project, but you could do something similar on a smaller budget. The only thing I wouldn't compromise on is the size of the tank, as our Congo Tetras need plenty of room and they will grow bigger than we see them here. So I thought I'd talk you through the step-by-step -step part of creating this display. I started by adding Tropica plant soil, which doesn't look exactly like the sandy, silty substrate found in this habitat in the beginning. However, over time, it will break down into a more powdery form, although you can also use Tropica aquarium powder from the outset. But I started with the larger granule soil, so the lilies could easily establish root systems straight away. And this soil was sponsored by Tropica, who were fundamental to the book project. I'm so grateful for their support. They provided so many of the, the plants as well as all the, the plant soil. I evened out the soil so that the deepest part was in the center and then began to place my manzanita wood, which was sponsored by Aquarium Gardens. Again, without whom I would have struggled to do this book. I mean, they are just amazing and it's a fantastic store and I'm totally biased, but they are heroes to me and I, I'm super grateful to them. Once the wood was in place and built into an island layout, I began planting the lily bulbs, which also came from Tropica, and I ensured that the top of the bulb just poked above the substrate. This prevents any chance of the bulb itself rotting, and it also makes it easier for new shoots to make their way up to the light. I then filled the tank using a 50-50 mix of rainwater and tap water. The tap water was run through an HMA unit, removing chlorine and chloramine, and the rainwater had been stored and preheated to 24 centigrade, which is 75 Fahrenheit. Once filled, I added a selection of botanicals, including some beautiful large seed pods, which had been kindly donated by Tannin Aquatics, who provided pretty much all the botanicals for the book project. I'm super grateful to them, especially the owner, Scott Fellman. I actually resisted the temptation to fill the tank with leaf litter and botanicals, as I wanted plenty of open dark substrate for the catfish to explore, but also to contrast with the red of the lilies and the colours of our Congo tetras. This is part of my natural style aquarium philosophy, combining biotope aquaria with aquascaping techniques and creating displays which can be home to a variety of fishes in the community tank tradition. I see it as my fourth way approach. There's biotopes, aquascapes, community tanks, and natural style aquaria. I don't claim to have invented this, but perhaps I'm the first one to give it a label and work really hard to get other people to have a go at it via the book project and my YouTube account. The tank was equipped with a mature Biomaster Thermo 850 filter sponsored by Wazi, who generously provided all the filtration for the book displays. And the pipework I've used is the acrylic set from Aquario.kr, who sponsored a variety of pipework and CO2 diffusers. The fish for this display were kindly donated by one of my biggest supporters, Ely Aquatics and Reptiles. It's a family-run store not far from my home, and Joe, the owner, ordered in and loaned me literally hundreds of fish for the book project, and I'm deeply grateful to her. She ordered in the Congo Tetras and the Butterfly Fish at the same time, so that we could add them together, and this reduces the chance of the Butterfly Fish being spooked by the busy Congo Tetras uh, if you add them earlier or later so they can adjust together at the same time. The upside down catfish were only added a few weeks later so as not to put too much pressure on the filter and water quality and to give the lilies time to grow in to dapple the light and make the cats feel more secure. Well, there you have it, my Congo forest pool display based on the descriptions and photos from my friend Tomas Minessi. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and that it inspires you to try and set up something similar. For now, take care and goodbye.